Hey, this is Dan with The Verge, and we are looking at the new Razer phone, which is the first smartphone from Razer, which you may know more of as a gaming laptop and peripheral company that makes mice and laptops and headsets and all this kind of stuff for gaming. Uh, but this is a smartphone, and it's the result of Razer's acquisition of Nextbit earlier this year. If you remember back in 2016, Nextbit released a phone called the Robin, which looks pretty similar to this phone. There's a little bit differences and we'll go into them, but basically you can see the DNA of Nextbit's phone here in the Razer phone. Uh, it's a very sharp, angular design. You can see it's really hard edges and, and uh, uh, hard corners. I'm calling it extremely rectangular uh, as compared to some other phones that might have softer edges, but it's, it's a very distinct design. It's got a 5.7 inch display, it's 2K resolution, and really the display is one of the main features here. It's a sharp IGZO panel, so it's an LCD panel. It's the same kind of displays that Razer uses on its gaming laptops. And what they've done here is they've put in 120 hertz refresh cycles on it, which if you're familiar with the iPad Pro that came out earlier this year, that had a 120 hertz display. This is the first phone to have it, which means that scrolling on it is super fast and super smooth. Everything is really slick and smooth. It's the kind of thing that it's a little bit hard to see in video, so you kind of have to take my word for it, but when you're using the phone, it's really uh, quite a remarkable experience in terms of just how responsive the screen is. Uh, Razer has developed this technology to actually adjust itself, so if you are playing a game or watching a video that's not running at 120Hz, the display will scale down to the appropriate uh, frames per second for a video if you're watching a movie at 24 frames per second so things don't look weird. But most of the time, you're gonna be seeing this at 120 frames per second, which is uh, super fast. It's definitely not something we're used to seeing on Android phones. The iPhone doesn't even run at this kind of frame rate, so it's pretty cool. Uh, now what's powering that is a Snapdragon 835 processor. There's a bunch of tech specs inside of this, including eight gigabytes of RAM, a giant 4,000 milliamp hour battery, and two front-facing speakers, so it's got stereo speakers, each with their own amp, and this thing gets really loud. So when you're playing music or playing a game, it's really designed to be held in landscape mode when you're playing a game, uh, and the, the sound just kind of like barks at you across there. You've got a power button with a fingerprint scanner on the side, some uh, volume rockers here on the side as well. And if you see on the bottom here, there's a USB-C charging port. This is also gonna be your headphone jack. Uh, despite the size of this phone, there is no headphone jack on it. So Razer is including an adapter to use 3.5 millimeter headphones. Uh, that adapter is THX certified, um, which is cool. It would be cooler to have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack in alongside of it for now at least though. On the back side, you can see the kind of the design. You've got Razer's signature snake head logo here, which is the three snakes here. There's gonna be a limited edition version of this that comes in that familiar Razer green, but most of the models are this silver chrome color. And then above that is a dual camera system. It's two 12 megapixel cameras. Uh, one of them is a standard lens, the other is a telephoto lens. One of the things that Razer has done with these cameras is enable the smooth zoom function so that it will switch between the two lenses smoothly without having to push a button to switch between wider telephoto. You just pinch your fingers and zoom in and zoom out as you want and it will switch to whichever lens is appropriate for it. Aside from that cameras app, that's really the only software that Razer has developed for the phone. It's actually using Nova Launcher here. Uh, there's a little a partnership to enable Nova Prime on the Razer phone, so it's a Nova Launcher is very fast and customizable. And it's Android 7.1.1 under the hood here. And Razer says there's gonna be an update to Android Oreo coming in the first quarter of next year. But otherwise, it's basically a stock Android experience. There's no customized UI or anything like that. All of Razer's work has been done under the hood to optimize performance, enable the 120 hertz uh, display and things like that, as opposed to UI changes. Now that big display is 5.7 inches across, as I mentioned, it's a 16 by nine display, and it means that the Razer phone is a big phone, there's no really getting around it. It also has a huge battery inside of it, it's 4,000 milliamp hours, and it's pretty big in your hand, and the square design is really designed for two-handed use. This is not a small phone at all, uh, and if you compare it to other phones of this caliber, you'll see that it is quite a bit bigger. The build quality is very good though, it's a metal finish, it's the same metal that Razer is using on its laptops, uh, and it's really nice and well-built. It's a bit step up from the Robin's plastic finish that we saw a couple years ago. Razer is going to be launching the Razer phone in the middle of November in the US and Europe. It's going to cost about $699. You can buy it unlocked direct from Razer and it will work on AT&T and T-Mobile. For more on the Razer phone and everything else, be sure to check out TheVerge.com and YouTube.com slash TheVerge. Crazy scrolling. Uh, uh, uh.